Now we're up to A9, and A9 is built a little differently. We're gonna start in the center, and then we're gonna work our way out. So the triangles get attached first, then we add these slant pieces, then the next triangle set, then the borders, and so on. So we're gonna start in the center, and I'm gonna take this and I'm going to baste opposite sides then opposite sides. Then my four triangles, I'm going to baste two of them, hypotenuse first then the legs and the other two I'm going to baste the legs and the hypotenuse and you're going to, it's going to alternate so that you don't have tags that clash too much. That way you can have those go into this section. So the first thing I'm going to do is based these five pieces. So I've basted and attached all four triangles to my center square. Next thing is to attach these to the edges of this square and a square. And I'm going to base the short sides first and then the long sides and I'm going to attach opposite and then opposite like I did on here. And as you can see my basting, I have opposing bastings so that they don't clash into each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste and attach these pieces. So instead of basting these the same way, I'm gonna alternate these just like I did the triangles. So I'll baste two of them, short sides first, then the long sides, and then I will base the other two long sides first, then the short sides. That will help with the uh, tag situation. So I've attached my first basted piece to the side. And what I want to make sure that you guys understand here, because this gets worse as you go on. This piece is a single uncut piece of paper wrapped in fabric. This is three pieces of paper wrapped in three pieces of fabric. There's going to be a thickness here. So what you want to do is line this up with the edge, stitch it to about here, then tie off, and then this is going to force it up, okay? But you're going to push this so that it lines this up with the other edge. And this is, like I said, this is gonna be dimensional and it will be up. You have to do this because if you don't line these up right, as you go on, it will get worse and worse. So this block builds dimension as you do it. So for this piece, I'm gonna do that here and then here, and then I'll be able to do these two. So let's see how this goes. So I've attached two of the four pieces and I've got these based at the opposite direction. I just wanted to point this out. I was able to get most of this into the seam. This one is a little bit short, but once I attach this section, I'll be able to fix that minor, in, uh, minor correction there. And this one is pretty close and then same thing here. It's, a lot of that's because of the basting I have because it's so thick on the corner. So the next thing I'm going to do is attach these other two to the other two sides, making sure that I get the ends on the blue ones. So I've got this all completed. So the next thing to do would be to add the triangles. And I'm going to do the same thing with the basting as I did with the first round. And I think I'm going to stick to the same location. So I will base these hypotenuse first, then the legs, and then I'll base these legs first and the hypotenuse. That way we've got it, you know, going in stages. I've got the next round of corners on. So that way most of these are nesting. Now comes the tricky part. If you look at the block, you can see that there is bar, bar, 
bar, bar. When you look at a log cabin, always one of them is going to be the length of one, the piece, and then two of them are going to be like this, where it could, you know it's the length of the piece plus another here and here, and then the third one will be the full length of the finished piece. This is not that. So there's a little bit of a trick, and this is the part where the fact that this is EPP is extremely helpful. What I'm going to do first is baste my pieces. And I'm going to baste them the short side first, then the long sides to give me the maximum sharpness on each edge. So let me do that first. Alright, so I've got my pieces basted. Now, the very first thing I need to do is take two of these pieces and on the very end of one of them, I'm going to put like this. I'm going to physically sew them together like an L in one of these configurations, okay? Doesn't matter which one because they're all going to end up like that on each other, but one of these I'm going to connect into an L formation right at the edge there and then I can start my assembly. So I've made my L piece. I've attached one end to the other end and here's where the trick comes in, okay? This section here, if you look at this diagram from the connected part of the bar to the end of the bar, connected part of the bar to the end of the bar, so here to here is the actual side of the square. So I'm going to take my L portion to start with and I'm going to put this on the side. Okay? And then I'm going to force it into submission. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start with this bar here, right on the edge, and do what I've been doing. I'm going to line this up, stitch it to about there, tie off. Then I'm going to come over here and line this up and stitch it all the way across. So then I'm going to have this thing dangling. Leave it, well, you can either leave it dangling completely or stitch it to a point, but I'm not, I don't want to stitch it to a point because I don't know exactly where it's going to end on this side because this is bigger. This is, this is grown. So if I put this here, I like this without having a bar there, there's not going to be enough room for the bar. So don't attach this. Only attach the side that it fills. Okay, so attach this here, hair off. So this is the length you attach. Then we'll go to the next step, but just so this one, do not attach this. Another note, since this is supposed to be a square, all the sides are supposed to be equal, but I noticed that mine are not. So this is all part of the process, okay? So this almost fits, okay? But if I turn it, it doesn't even come close. Almost fits, doesn't even come close, okay? The doesn't even come close sides, I'm gonna force into submission. So I think I'm gonna start with one of those on this beginning part because it'll be easier. So I'm gonna put one corner on the edge. And if you look, just how bad this is here. And if I stretch it, it goes almost to the edge of the L, but it has to be here. So it's gonna be quite the task and it's gonna be quite dimensional. So I'm gonna attach these ends and then I can suck it up into this length. So I've tacked the end here and I've tacked the end here, but the middle is not tacked. So what, that's a lot of excess that I have to suck up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit here like, and I'm gonna to try to push the middle Okay, and then work my way from there. So I'll start in the middle so that you don't have 
a bunch of bunching so that this doesn't go to one side or the other. This will help minimize it if you start in the middle and work to both ends. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up. So I've attached this whole side. My basting has come loose a little bit here is what this is. I'll tag it down with some glue. But the next thing to do is to take another piece and this piece is going to span this entire length. Now, if it won't, you're forcing it into submission again. So I will go ahead and do that and fix my basting on the edge. So I've attached this second side. This is still not attached. So now we're gonna do the third side and this is gonna be quite the endeavor because it's significantly shorter, but that's okay. So as of right now though, you can see it's starting to get some dimensionality to it. That's normal. We're just gonna keep moving on. So I've got my third side attached here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and sew up this fourth side, making sure that I put this edge right at the edge and then stitch it like I've been doing. Okay, so I've got my four sides on and my center section's done. You can see there's a couple of imperfections here. I've got this that sticks out. Once I attach this side, it'll blend in. I don't want to get too terribly picky because I could do this all day long, but it does have some dimensionality. It looks like a little bowl or it pushes up and looks like a little hill. This is normal. So don't get freaked out. You didn't do anything wrong. So now I got the middle done. All right, so the next part is, so this goes like this, okay? And the next part are these that get attached to there. Now, if we look at the block diagram, once this whole thing is formed, then we can add the rows. So in order to make it easier, what I'm gonna do is bring this into the mix right here and right here and right here okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna baste these I'm gonna baste hypotenuse first and then the legs so that the tags are gonna go towards here on every one of them on these I'm gonna baste short sides then the long sides and my tags will go away from the center I'm going to connect these two pieces into one triangle and then attach it to this square. Because what that's going to do then is it's going to finish forming this center block to make the next steps a heck of a lot easier. So let me get to basting and making these into triangles. So I've basted all eight of the pieces and now I'm going to sew them together with my blue thread. So I've stitched together all my triangles. Now it's a matter of putting them together with the center square. So I've got two of the four corners connected and it's, we still got some dimensionality here, but that's okay. Now I'll get the other two on. All right, so I got all the four corners attached to the center piece. So I'm gonna set this aside. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on these pieces, this side right here. So we're going to take these three pieces on both sides and baste these. Form them into one unit and then attach them to either side of the square. So for basting on this one, I'm going to baste these. Well, if I baste these first, then the tags are going to go in. So maybe I need to baste these before that to make the tags go away and then this before this first then this so the tags go in so I put together the three pieces on each side and now I'm going to attach them to the sides of the center square so I've attached both of the side units to the center section so now it's time to go on to let's do the bottom first and 
and so this is just doing this bottom row here it's the same three pieces as the sides except you're adding half square triangles to each end so I'm gonna go ahead and get these basted and connected into units so I've made my half square triangle units on each side and connected the three center pieces and now I will connect them into a row so I've got my bottom row attached, but when I did that, I noticed that this is not centered exactly. When I'm taking these and trying to suck up this excess, I wasn't taking into account the location of these points. And as a result, these points all need to be in a line. So this to here to here, and these, this one is too far this way and this one's too far this way. I'm going to have to take out these seams a little bit and fix this manually because what it looks like right now is it looks like it's kind of spinning. It may not come across completely on the camera, but this center section looks like it's skewed because of this. So what I'm going to have to do is take straight edge and I'm not going to draw a line, but I am going to look at this line from here to here and then from here to here and make sure that all of these points are on that line. Once they're on that line, then the spinning effect will be lessened or eliminated completely. But as it is right now, I'm not a big fan of it. And um, I'm gonna put on the next row, I'm gonna put on this last row section first and then fix it. What I've decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and assemble this top row and then attach it. But because I was looking at how bad this is and you want to line up everything. So I've got from this point to this point, all of them should be on that line and they're not. So what I have here is I have quite a deviation. I put this here and this here. I have that one, the black one's good, this one's okay, this one's a little off, and this one's severely off, and this one's severely off, and this one's kind of close. Once I get this row on, I'll be able to then do all the points going this way, and then I can fix them. I think I'm going to pin them and kind of mess with it there, but I'll get a solution once I get this next row on. So I've attached my top row and uh, this completes my A9 block, but I'm not happy with how it's turned out. So what I'm going to do is take this stick and I'm going to look at both of these points because I needed to have all of the points on here in order to line them up. So here I have a severe problem here. To start with this one's there this one's there this one's there this one's not that's almost like an eighth of an inch off and then over here if I keep this lined up these are okay but this one point is throwing off the visual of the whole thing I'm gonna have to fix this and then on this way have this one's got to be fixed this one's okay this one's got to be fixed this one's severely off severely off and these two are okay so I've got to fix three points on this block so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix one at a time because if I fix one and it moves other ones I want to make sure that I do this so I'm gonna start with that one that's really really bad which is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and line that back up and stitch it back correctly. Part of what I do in my videos is I walk you through my mistakes and my fixes and my frustrations. So I thought I was going to take out this blue thread and then just fix it. But what I discovered is I I took a white mark, uh, white pencil, and I found the middle of this top section of this and on each side and the middle of this and these 
the white marks tend to match up to each other pretty well, but the white marks need to line up with this tip as well. So this one is off, and this one is off, and this one's off. That difference, because of the way this block is built, is why this is so off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm I'm going to I'm going to going to take the block apart. I'm going to just rip out some seams within the block. So I'm going to try to rip a hole in it and all that fun stuff. So this is going to be interesting. But um, <clears throat> I'm going to recenter these points on these pieces and see where we land from there. I don't want to go nuts. I've already kind of ripped the block apart quite a bit and not come up with an easy solution. So I'm going to recenter these on these points and then see how that does for the rest of these points. So I fixed the middle part along with those marks and so what I have now is I have, if you look from the black corners, this point to this point and this point to this point, ignoring this outside point a minute. And um, what I noticed I have, whoops, let's get that out of the way, is a pretty good, it's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. And then if I check it this way, from that black point to black point, it lines up really, really closely here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up all the other seams that I've ripped out and make sure that this is going to line up right. But fixing that center portion has pretty much fixed this block. So let me fix all my rip outs. So I managed to repair all of the seams that I ripped out and it's a lot, lot better. So I'm going to call this completed on my A9 block.